Hey guys, Rex here. Some quick math, just because I'm curious. If you have an object being lifted up between the heavens and the earth, and a balloon that can emit electromagnetic frequencies or pulses, um, how far can it see, i.e. what is the line of sight? Well, that's a pretty simple calculation. If you're looking for the kilometers, um, uh, 121,000 foot altitude of your antenna that is pushing off a signal is going to have a line of sight distance of about 685 kilometers. That's uh, just the radius. So you take that times two um, to get the entire diameter of the affected area. That would be line of sight. Okay. Um, if you want the radio horizon, which gets you a bit farther because radio waves, you know, interact with the atmosphere in a strange way. It goes a little farther than you take 4.12 times the square root of the height and you will get a radius or the, the um, uh, distance of projection from the antenna. So you take that number times two, basically you're getting almost 800 kilometers of radio horizon. Now with an EMP, to my knowledge, which is, uh, you know, I'm a scientist a little bit, right? So, um, and you can look this stuff up and you can look at all the plots. There's not a lot known about it in the civilian world, all the details exactly, because uh, they kind of quit doing a lot of atmospheric tests after they discovered EMP. But from what they do know, um, there are different types of EMP uh, waves, right? So you have the heave wave, which is caused by basically a rapid displacement of the atmosphere, a rapid th thermal displacement of the atmosphere in combination with uh, thermal energy and light radiation. And that builds up over the course of minutes. So if it is a high yield nuclear weapon, which could absolutely be lifted up by a balloon, even at a lower altitude, like 121,000 feet, if it's a high yield thing, it's gonna go way beyond the line of sight for some of those effects, the long wave, e, you know, heave wave effects. Now for electronics to immediately be rendered um, disabled, like solid state electronics, if they fry immediately, by the way, those little gadgets you can hook on your car and stuff, if you understand how this works, um, it's kind of funny. Technically the gadget will work, but it's every, every circuit independent of, you know, whatever gadget might be hooked onto the power source acts as an antenna to the really high frequency pulse stuff, which happens in milliseconds. And so that wave is a, is a lower radius, but still, if you got a high yield device being lifted up that high, can very much affect even local electronics, let alone the grid. So I got a question for you guys. Not trying to scare you, right? If you want line of sight, by the way, it's 3.57 times the square root of the height of the antenna to get the radius there, or not to get the rate, yeah, the, the line of sight distance, okay? Um, and you can look that up. That's basic radio 101 type stuff. Basically, you have a series of hot air balloons, okay? A series of hot air balloons that have been sighted and Biden wanted them shot down. And they said, no, it's dangerous to shoot it down because of the debris. What exactly is that thing carrying? I might ask if that's true. I mean, yeah, a chunk of something. I mean, and it's not a thing about not having the kahunas to shoot it down. It's not that because they do treacherous things 24 seven, way beyond that kind of stuff. I mean, look at what we're involved in right now, right? What's on that balloon, I wonder? Is there an understanding that if one of them's taken out, then all of them uh, go, go off? Look at the timing. We're right at the onset of a major offensive in a theater that could degenerate into World War III in the snap of a fingers. So if you have all your ducks in a row ahead of time and everything's pre-delivered and in place, so there's no launch on warning, it's already there. In one second, they just hit a button and high yield, high altitude nuclear bombs go off. And it doesn't take that many if they're large yield devices at that kind of altitude. Now, yes, if you get up 400 miles with a smaller yield deal, it'll work a lot better with altitude helps a lot, right? But I'm just saying, like, this was literally discussed. I don't know if you guys have access to or if you remember the, I don't think it was the EMP Commission. You can watch those. They were on, I don't know if it was C-SPAN, but it was public record. They had the meetings with the nuclear energy guys, with the military, with the congressional report guys. And they sat, and it was boring. It was like day, a few days long. 
they sat around and hashed out the paperwork and they went over every potential scenario where enemies thinking outside the box can take out the power grid and cause 90 plus percent casualties for the United States just by turning off the power switch. And if it happened right before a winter storm or a extreme cold spell, historic cold, cold spell, where 50 million people are gonna experience extreme freeze temperatures, right? We're used to it where I'm at. If you time it at that time, timed with an offensive, you just took out the superpower with the flick of a switch. And your casualties are, are more than that, more than 95%. This is the Congress talking, not me. This is the EMP commission. I watched all those and studied them and took notes because it's interesting. So now we get, but one of the things they brought up in that was high altitude balloons delivering nuclear weapons <laughs> because anyone can do it. And then they can pass it off and blame it on anyone too, right? So who's actually delivering these things? Is it China? Maybe. Or is it that's the story right now because actually someone else delivered it and we're just kind of playing it off on them. Like, oh, yeah, we're talking to them. Like, it's probably them through a proxy like Kim Jong-un because then he's the fall guy. He takes the, the, the brunt of the fury when it happens militarily, right? While we're still in our death throes before we freeze to death. Just saying. Interesting. Why don't they shoot them down, man? They do way more hardcore stuff than that. Why don't they shoot down the balloons? What's on them? What kind of debris would fall down if they were shot down? Or are they on a switch to where if they're all of a sudden they got a missile lock, they just go off and they've been told. I mean, I could write a, I could write a video game script or a movie very easily like this. It's like interesting how the media is kind of like, oh, it's observation. Yeah, maybe. You know, I've been get, I've been getting strange radio and radar signals out here in this extreme rural part of the world out of the blue, out of nowhere, that sets off my radar alarms and stuff. Because I got stuff I got weird stuff like that. And for the last week or two, I'm like, what the hell? Who could there's not like a cop sitting on the there's there's no cops out here. Not like a, and I look, I'm like, someone like you know, hitting my parked car in the driveway with a with a radar? Because stuff is just going nuts here. So what exactly is going around? What's going on around here? Hey, you might want to think about making sure your wood is split. <laughs> Where are you going to poop when there's no electricity? Before you freeze. <laughs> Where are you going to poop? In your outhouse, Doug? I mean, let, don't worry about toilet paper. Where are you going to poop? There's going to be no sewers. All that stuff is run on electricity, man. It's all run on pumps, unless you got a gravity-fed septic system. Okay, then where are you getting your water from? Is your well electric? Is that your well that you dug, is that electric? Is your solar system and all the controls susceptible to EMP? I'm telling you, that is an easy, cheap, effective way to absolutely... And then if it's something like just turning the lights off, and we can't identify exactly who did it, but we're giving, we're giving the public something to chew on for now so they don't freak out, right? Like unknown origin balloons, that's going to cause a problem. But if the power just turned off, what would, what would happen? Some of my brothers have been talking about this for years, man. Like TJ, my bro, he's been talking about it for years. I've been talking about it uh, for years too in a different angle. <laughs> to me, it's more entertaining. Because I know the final outcome of what all that is going to, what all is going to happen with that. We talk about that on my Patreon channel. If you guys want to talk more about this stuff, uh, come check out the Patreon channel um, where we're going to discuss this in greater detail. I might give more information on exactly how the EMP thing works. And think about it. So you put your device in an EMP proof bag. Who are you going to call? <laughs> Where are you going to drive to? There's no gas pumping. There's no money. There's no restaurants. There's no stores anymore. That stuff is consumed within a few hours. You have to think long range, man. If you want to think long range, and if you want to navigate this modern uh, cataclysm that's coming, you have to understand all avenues of escape. So we talk about there's more than just what people see than what's plotted out, you know, by the civil defense. There's way more than that. That's what we're talking about over on my Patreon page. So if you want to check it out, man, 
come visit us over there. We'll catch you on the flip side. Stay warm.